gonna kick off this location in Jacksonville with drone shot of the building. Just waiting for the GPS to acquire. I'm in an unrestricted airspace up to 1500 meters. I only need to go up about, I would say 60 feet. I'm good. I literally need one shot. And of course it just started sprinkling. Hoping it clears off. Let's go for it here, see if the lens stays clean. Success. Yep, this technology is so dialed now. I'm so happy with this. Glad I got my part 107. I don't really have any aspirations to go beyond the mini size. I've got a couple more months till this mini two the remote ID requirement kicks in. I'm not gonna buy a little module for this guy. I'm just gonna buy the newer mini three that has our ID enabled. But the smart controller, man, is a must have not just for the bright built-in screen and the HDMI output, but the fact that, uh, oh, the control sticks, the feathering and slow speed it is much more precision than the factory radio that comes with the Mini 2. Since my little YouTube channel started gaining momentum, uh, kind of a constant inquiry I get directly over email and some text messages is, hey, I'm a current freelancer, I'm ACing or I'm working in Grip Electric and I wanna move up or I just wanna stay busy. How do you find new clients? And this current travel job, we were having the same discussion on the road, exchanging more stories about the 2008 recession and how that for both of us before 2008, and after were profoundly different environments. For me, my high margin projects were traditional media like broadcast TV spots, news, making shows for cable television. And then after 08, the high volume work pivoted to, for me to more corporate communications, online marketing, and 30 to 60 minute direct response shows for traditional cable and broadcast. And it wasn't because the market changed, it was that the top of the food chain crew before the recession vanished. And there were all these opportunities to move up for those of us that were still hanging on or, or younger and moving up. And in parallel to that recession and recovery, which wasn't just 08, it was like 08 through like 2012 or even 13, is there was this rapid change in technology, things downsized from film HD cam and very cam to like red and DSLR and sort of the old guard of filmmaking working with big HD and film really a lot of them struggled to adapt to tech and IT centric workflows tapeless media and having to do like onset firmware updates and searching on forums for camera bugs on shoot days. And so for those of us that were still around in Hungary we just found new business verticals and adapted to the technology and went after it. When we were college students, my wife worked at a local TV station. She ran the teleprompter for the newscast. So I got exposed to prompting early on before my career had started. So once I moved to Los Angeles and was trying to make it on my own, one of the first things I invested in and would gift to shoots where I was booked as a shooter was the prompter kit. Running this Mars 400 transmitter on the FX9 and FX3 in gimbal mode. I have a little free world monitor with the receiver, but I'd like to get the app working on the iPhone and iPad. I've got it installed, it connects over the Wi-Fi, but it just freezes and crashes. So I think I need a firmware update on the Mars 400, but I need a thumb drive and a USB mini adapter to get it in there. I don't know if that came with those components when I bought it, but I don't have that stuff anymore. B-roll on the gimbal out at a rail yard. Also some drone shots here and the two railroad contacts were super supportive to flying the drone. It was nice. I thought I was gonna get a bunch of pushback. It was clear air airspace and both of the railroad contacts are also part 107 pilots, one recreationally, the other one flies a heavy lift unit for the railroad. So they were both very supportive to allowing me to fly in the yard and also super helpful pointing out visual obstructions or a lot of power lines and towers to navigate around. So I basically would walk to a spot, send the drone up and pan around to get my shots. And I did a few traveling, moving horizontal shots, but no more than like one or two rail cars in length. We were set up to fly out at 6 p.m. after our shoot to our next leg in New Jersey. Well, airport fail, flight canceled. 16 hours later, same flight. So back to Jacksonville for the night.
Same day evening flights are becoming less and less dependable. This one kept delaying every hour for five hours and then the crew timed out. So they sent us home and we had the same flight at 10 a.m. the next day. Elmwood Park, New Jersey. Yesterday was a travel day. Got the day off today, it's Sunday. We might go into the city this afternoon, may not. I'm like, eh, 50-50, I mean, I'll go. Everyone wants to go, but I don't have this burning desire to go. I was just there a couple months ago covering the, uh, the Trump circus. So we'll see, walk into the local bagel shop. Well, we decided to stay on the Jersey side, so we went up to the High Lawn for brunch. This is in West Orange, New Jersey. Beautiful view of Manhattan. Gorgeous houses up in this area too, like big, I would say seven, 10,000 square foot properties on maybe one acre lots. The house we're staying at is vacant. It's owned by the family of my clients. It's actually been in their family since they built it 71 years ago. And we got back to a basement full of raw sewage on a Sunday could not get a cleanup crew out there on Sunday. We did get a plumber to snake the line. So I just know from my years of dealing with my rentals that you don't wanna let that stuff sit and stew for 12 or 24 hours. So we bought a shop vac at Home Depot and this is what I did on my afternoon off. I had a question regarding how I determine my day rate when I'm working out here on these smaller one-man band productions. And the short answer is rates are pretty consistent here in the United States. Like you'd be sh maybe shocked to learn that New York City, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Chicago don't necessarily command higher rates than Cleveland, Jacksonville, New Jersey, just places I've been to in the last few days. Uh, it's pretty consistent across the, the U.S., you know, maybe plus or minus 10 or 15 percent. So that's a good jumping off point. Uh, although I will say like I, I tend to be a little bit on the lower side of a major market rate because my focus is more on long-term relationships. I don't want to be, oh, well, he was expensive or he gouged me a little bit on all those accessories and add-ons charging list price for a, a one-off production because I want them to remember me and them to feel like they got a really good value for, for what they paid on a given day. And, you know, I want that long-term repetitive relationship with that producer, even if it's only a phone call once a year. Uh, next up is if I commit on a project, it's pretty common for something, even after they lock the dates and the deposits in, that their dates shift or I get sick and can't work. Or for those reasons, I may need to pass it off to somebody else. And if I went in deeply discounted, I've done this in the past and put myself in this awkward position where I can't replace myself or, or it's a thing where I was willing to one man band it and the new director of photography doesn't do sound and now they get to hire two people, which is a greater cost than what my, my package was priced at. And now I'll contradict myself. I've had date shift like that where I'm one man band and there's no one that we can find that's available that's capable to do it. So then it circles back and the clients reschedule around my schedule and I have a few of those that are many year long relationships where we, I get to sway things a bit, not with absolute control, but they'll, they'll shuffle things to accommodate my availability. Love those. And then there's the travel component. So now that I'm working less calendar days by choice and I'm based in Texas versus very busy Southern California, for most of my time in SoCal, while I did do a lot of travel, it was generally more profitable to pass on travel work and just remain available for local because typically travel is a reduced rate on your travel days. In my case, I charge a consistent labor rate for shoot or travel, but I only bill for gear on the days that we're actually in production mode. Dinner at the Mall of America. I've driven by this on past bookings in town, but this was my first time actually going in and we gorged ourselves on this ridiculous sushi platter. It's a wrap in Minnesota, two days. Next stop, Ohio. First flight of the week that was on time and actually relaxing, 10 a.m. departure. I think we had a two hour flight with a one hour time zone change. Never been to this city before. Moxie Hotel, the lobby's on the second floor. And even though I haven't been here, I was having this like weird deja vu 
and I realized I've stayed at this place, I think it was in Charlotte, with the exact same floor plan. Columbus, Ohio. Today's a paid day off, and I am struggling a bit with uh, what to do with my downtime. Working on the vlog for this weekend, but uh, yeah, I'm just stalled out. I don't know. I'm kind of in Groundhog Day mode on this production. It's week two of week three, but every day is, you know, it's the same. It's the same story we're telling for the show. Just a different subject and b-roll. So just exchanging some text messages with Ryan Mitchell, my buddy, freelancer based up in Dallas, but he's currently in Maryland. He's the engineer in charge on a television truck. He's been on the road for weeks and weeks. He may be past a month at this point. But uh, I was just crying to him saying the same thing, like, I don't know what to talk about. Just in Groundhog Day. And he's like, well, he's like, maybe that's your topic. Just the struggle of uh, keeping yourself entertained on the road. Which is why I started vlogging, as I've mentioned a few times in the past. It uh, was really something to occupy my mind and then the only other thing I've been doing is working out. For about three years I've been kicking around the idea of putting together an e-course, just a little paid thing, not too expensive, getting into the financials and my background, investing, actual marketing efforts I've made that have been successful to scale my career as well as some of the failures. I've touched on a bunch of these on the YouTube channel but I'm thinking maybe behind a paywall I'm a little bit more comfortable disclosing some personal info. It's like, I don't want to be hassling people that are below me trying to get started, that are broke, trying to make it as a freelancer. Uh, but at the same time, I, I also don't want to have business financial info just out floating on the public internet. At least if it's behind a payroll, paywall, it's a smaller audience that's more targeted. And uh, maybe I can build a little community in there. For each project, travel or local, I start a note on my iPhone where I write down all the pertinent info for the project. It can be camera record settings, special gear I need to load on the truck. So on this current show, first up is the important stuff. When we were in New Jersey, this was some local meal recommendations. Next up, I've got a punch list of equipment. And then next year when I'm on this show again, I'll refer back to this note for packing all of my gear. So there's kind of some top level items I forgot on our first leg. And then I've got equipment inventoried by case. So here's the camera case, all the items, LED lighting case with its contents and tripod case. The one case not listed on here is my carry-on with my personal items, laptop, and all of the various batteries. Next up, I track all of my receipts. So I had two Uber rides. Now I have emailed copies of those receipts, but I put it in my notes as a reminder so that when I'm putting the invoice together, I know to go find those, export them as a PDF. And then for the various paper receipts, I love that this note app allows you to start and scan a PDF document. So I have this open just as I go. Uh, I've been traveling with the producer, so they've been covering all my expenses. So I only have a few here, a meal, baggage, one time. Next up is equipment items, things I need to purchase for next time or repair when I get home. So I broke one of my hyperthin HDMIs. While I have a spare for the show, I need to order a replacement for next time. And then I want to see if there's a power cord for the Ronin-S accessory port to power the, the Mars transmitter. Here are my notes from a news assignment that was a few weeks back covering four cities in a one week run. So same idea, I traveled in and for this client, I just bill them hours versus a, like a flat rate on travel. So I had a three hour drive evening before into Houston. And then I put a note in here to remind myself to find the hotel receipt for that Houston stop. And then uh, I had these two La Quinta stays where I didn't get printouts of the receipts. They were emailed to me. So again, this is a reminder when I do my invoice to go find and make PDFs of those email receipts. I had a dinner at a restaurant that was cash only. So in that case, I'll hand write a paper receipt noting it as cash and I scan that and add it to the PDF. And then my hours. I don't log hours or keep track of them if it was within my standard day rate. But uh, if I think anytime it goes over, 
I keep the note in here. And then when I, at the end of the assignment, when I'm billing, I go back and tally it up to the right here. So you can see San Antonio was a 12 hour Eagle Pass. I had a 14, an 11, and a 10. And then same idea, I got all my restaurant, hotel, or any other paper receipts. And uh, mileage on this client, uh, we, I bill mileage versus uh, some other scenario. So uh, 1,209 miles total. And that's, uh, I just reset my odometer at the start of the assignment. And I am routine enough now that I know when I get back to my driveway at wrap, I always shoot a photo of the odometer in the van. And then equipment notes. So I had to order some more BNC barrels. There's an X there because I already did that. I want to get a scrim gym kit or like a Matthews road rags set up or maybe the modern studio equivalent. I have not yet purchased which I'm still kind of waffling around, but a two by three size should cover me. I need something that works for airline as well as uh, local out of the van. I think I'm going to pick up a variable ND for my 28 to 135G zoom, specifically for on the FX3. And I also want to get a hot shoe compatible shotgun mic for the FX3. I don't like that audio top handle. It makes the camera so tall and awkward. I actually never used it on a job to date. And then I want to get a small rig quick release similar to like they're made, I think, for monitors, but I want to put one on my electro dual channel receiver. So it's faster for me to move that between cameras and into the, the mixer bag. I'm gonna walk over and check out the Ohio State campus. So the last item on the list for today is how do I find new business and in general just stay busy as an independent freelancer in media. So I got two examples in the past where I spent some money to put together a new vertical freelancing and they worked for me and I realized, you know what, this stuff's got a lot of value. So that's where I'm thinking that'll be the start of doing a little e-course program where I'll go into those breakdowns, show you the actual revenue, how it ramped up, how it wasn't marketing to my desired trade, which is working as a director of photography, but it was ancillary or in a specific industry that in an in indirect way led to me getting new bookings as a DP and also advance me on to work on bigger productions. If that's something you're interested in checking out, I would love to get a little feedback in the comments below. Like, how would you like to see that formatted? Are there specific things you want me to talk about? And again, I think if it's behind some kind of paywall, smaller community where we can chat a bit, I'm more comfortable to open up QuickBooks, show you the revenue, show you how it grew and shifted over years, show you what kind of money I was making, what kind of investments I made that have made it easier to facilitate getting more work, and in a lot of cases, just having dry powder so that I don't have to get on time commitments for lower rate items, which made me then available to to go after the bigger stuff when it came in. All right, that's all I got for today. I appreciate all the views and the correspondence in the comments. It is genuinely something that I enjoy doing. Keeps me sane from getting lonely and dying of boredom, sitting in all these hotel rooms and hanging around in terminals with delayed flights. Appreciate all of it. Please, let's continue the discussion in the comments below.